What's going on ladies and gentlemen, Paul Matrix here and today we are taking a look at the Terra Charge Megazord, the deluxe version. I have already reviewed the 5 inch figure. Box is standard Bandai box, the figure is actually pretty light and doesn't take up the whole box. Lots of windows, you can see that he can combine with just about anything in the line. So let's open him up and take a look. Out of the packaging, the Terra Charge Megazord looks all right from the front. The back is stark black and isn't really worth looking back there at all. It's not a bad looking Megazord, but I would have liked to have seen some more coloring. But the original Japanese didn't have any coloring either, so I'm not really worried about it. The head sculpt is pretty good, and the Terra or Pterodon sculpt in the head is okay as well. However, he is red eyed not like he is in the show or in the fight when he becomes a good guy. I think it's a different color. I believe it's blue. One thing I find very funny about the Zord are the, uh, the crotch hands move. So you can have jazz crotch hands. Wabba! Even though in the looks department the figure is just okay, there is actually something that I am greatly concerned about, and that has to do with the shoulders and the hips. They are Zord Builder ports, they are way, way too loose. There's play in the shoulders, a lot of play actually, but you see me moving the shoulder here, it's moving the entire torso. That's because the hips have a disturbing amount of play in them. I mean, there's, there's a lot of play there, and I'm not entirely sure how to fix that. I'm gonna have to look online to see if I can fix ratcheting joints. Now, the you can plug the beast battery into the figure pretty easily. The Mouth opens up very, very wide, much wider than the Japanese counterpart, and you just plug it in. Though it doesn't do anything, it doesn't activate any gimmicks or anything. Transformation for this guy is very simple and very authentic to the Japanese version. First, fold up the arms, close the mask, remove the head, which actually isn't supposed to remove, fold up the crest, pull the figure apart, now this is different from the Japanese version where you have to reach around to the lower back of the robot mode and extend this piece and fold it down. This will allow the figure to actually sit in beast mode. If you didn't do that, it just kind of fall, falls back and points to the sky. Extend the wingtips, come to the legs and fold them up and then turn them or flip them up so that the, oops, sorry, so that the this big piece is sticking straight up and the rear and the jazz hands claws are pointed towards the back where the tail is. And then combine them together, fold the legs down and connect the legs to the back of the wings. And there we go, that's it. This is where that piece that we pulled out from the lower back comes into play. If it wasn't there, which I will fold it back up for you, if it wasn't there, the figure would just fall back on itself like that. So you really do want it extended, unless you're going for the falling back on his butt look. But yeah, you kind of need it. One head scratching addition that Bandai made to this figure that the Sentai version just doesn't have are guns. They gave the Zord guns. And the way these guns work is they work like shoulder cannons. Once you plug the guns into the ports on the back of the head, or towards the back of the shoulders, they flip forward. However, getting them plugged in is easier said than done a little bit. Maybe I just have it backwards. See, they're supposed to plug in to this section here, and they just don't want to sometimes. So I end up having to remove the head, attach the guns, let the guns flip forward, and then put the head back on. And the guns don't lock back here. They just, as soon as they're plugged in, they flip forward. Now you can also add these in dyno mode as well, but I think it's a cool addition. I'm just not sure why they added it. It certainly didn't need it, but I do kind of dig it. And of course, no Power Rangers 6 Ranger Zord would be complete without merging with the main Megazord. So let's go ahead and do that. First, we're going to return the Pterozord to pterodactyl mode. Next, we're going to pull the tail section off of the Dino Charge Megazord and attach it to the back of the Terra Megazord on these pegs. So we'll go ahead and do that, like so. 
Then we're going to grab the head of the Pterozord like that, pull it off, pop off the helmet from the Dino Charge Megazord, and plop this head on top, and open up the mouth like so. Then the Dino Charge helmet will peg into this strut right here on the back like that. And then this whole thing pegs into the back of the Dino Charge Megazord. And the tail acts as a third leg. So here we have the dumb, uh, um, huh. There's nothing on any of the boxes or in the directions that say what this mode is called. Huh. Well, to the internet! At the time of this review, no one on the internet seems to be able to tell me what this mode is. Now, knowing my luck, as soon as I'm done filming, like 30 seconds later, or 20 minutes later, when I start editing, the name will appear online. Oh well. Overall, the look is pretty good. I actually do like the look of it, and I like it better than I did the Super Sentai version of it. I don't know. I just kind of dig this. It, it works for me, even though it's really super bulky. But I do appreciate the fact that they've engineered it such that the tail acts as a third leg. Uh, the Super Sentai version did as well. It works. It's pretty cool. I, I kind of dig it. And of course, no Power Rangers Dino Charge review would be complete without a comparison of the Super Sentai version. As you can see, there are some differences with the Super Sentai version. Obviously the size, the paint coloring and the paint scheme, and the way the arms are set up. On the USA version, the claws for the pterodactyl mode are here in the front, while the Japanese version, you can turn the claws. So there is that. Also just wanted to let you guys see Western versus Western. Is the Terra Charge Mangazord worth it? Yeah, I would say yes. If you are a fan of Power Rangers Dino Charge, it is a must have. I actually do like the battery powered weapon gimmick. I think that actually works and actually does add a little something to the Western idea or the Western mode. It's definitely different and actually kind of neat. So gang, I hope you have enjoyed this video review. As always, I'm Bolt Matrix, asking you to like, comment, and subscribe, and please be sure to check out my next video review.